uh, Cornelia, why, why is your organization pursuing a net zero goal? What are the benefits and why is this important to you? Yeah, thanks of all, Ursula. Thank you for having me here and, and giving the opportunity to share what TCEP is up on. And I mean, Coca-Cola has a long heritage and zero ambition isn't simply the response to science or to consumer pressure. It's about changing the business for the future and the well-being of the planet. And we know that the world is at a critical point at the moment, and we as CCEP also need to play our part to cut greenhouse gas emissions and to limit global temperature increase to 1.5 degrees, in line clearly with the Paris um, Climate Change Agreement, to protect the planet and the next generation for the future. And when you look where we have coming from, it's not something new, it's just something we we want to work further on. In the last decade, we already achieved 30.5% reduction in our climate emissions. And when you look forward for the next decade, we are planning to reduce again 30%. So becoming net zero in 2040 is really something which is just natural to go on in the future, to really meet net zero by 2040. And we need to get faster also with offsetting with the emissions we can't reduce anymore, clearly there needs to be this kind of offsetting opportunity so that we then as CCEP can become net zero. Cornelia, you already gave some great examples, but what positive action is your company taking already that is driving the change needed to make net zero a reality? Yeah. So when you look, we, we look into the full value chain and we take full responsibility for all of our emissions, whether it's scope one, scope two, or also in the scope three emissions. And we normally look into kind of pillars. So we look into the packaging, where we really can reduce emission coming from the packaging. And this is investing in refillables or in dispense technology, as well as in the circularity of all of our packaging. And of course, looking in the kind of packaging we offer to the consumers. Then there's this big ingredients part, where we also need to work with our suppliers in reducing their emissions. Um, so that the ingredients also will be reduced from a carbon viewpoint. And then it's the big point about manufacturing, where we want to become also as a manufacturing side climate neutral. And this year we could achieve in two of our manufacturing sites, one in Spain um, and the one in Sweden, also climate neutral. So we have two sites climate neutral. And of course, this is something going on for the future so that next year, the next manufacturing site will come. And then we have this big logistic piece where we look into alternative technologies or alternative fuels moving from the truck to the train, right? Where we have green electricity, also looking in kind of different fuels where we can reduce the emissions to support the logistics reduction. So, Cornelia, what do you see as the most significant hurdle when it comes to companies achieving net zero? How have you been able to overcome this? Yeah, so speaking from a CCP viewpoint, it really has been important to embed sustainability in the heart of our business. That it's not a separate business strategy or separate from our long range plan business strategy, but it is something really from the top level, so the ELT to the shop floor, that all of our decisions are taking sustainability and here carbon reduction into account. We have achieved that we have a sustainability committee from a board level, and we could agree that our executive leaders in their um, long-term incentives have, have a climate goal. So their reduction or their business decision in the reduction will be reflected in their incentive. And then looking, looking um, into the business, of course, you need to then roll this down in the long range plan and then in the annual business plan. And once you have achieved this, 
it just becomes action. But that was for me the significant hurdle that you clearly embed this next to your financial business plan, next to your branding plan, your marketing plan, and it is something which works together. What do you know now that you wish you'd known before, before you started strategizing and planning for Net Zero Future? I think um, it's once you really integrated sustainability in the business plans and in the long range plan, you will see that it's moving faster. You need really, and this is what I, what I wanted to have known before, this embedding piece and the commitment from the top to the middle and the um, the shop floor leadership team is the key piece you need to do and you need to have so that the plans you have in theory on paper really come into life and then you can see this in the reduction. So having a clear and complete picture throughout the business, who's accountable for what and who can make what kind of decision based on the, the data and their um, area of peers of influence is helping a lot with speeding up your plan. Great. And I think you've given us some really important learnings from the past uh, just then. Uh, are there any other key learnings that you would want to give to a company who is work starting on this journey? So having achieving climate reduction or even net zero, you can't do alone. You really need to reach out to your suppliers, to your customers, to your consumers, to everybody, to other industry, to work together, to learn from each other. You need to be very transparent to yourself and to your top leaders on the kind of where the emissions coming from so you can tackle the, um, the ones who matters the most and start with them and then che uh, cheer or like celebrate your success and make this a success story, not only for you, but for your suppliers as well and for your customers, and then you can achieve. So this, if, if you're just starting, build up transparency, build up trust, and then embed it in your business plan and have the commitment from all of, our, of your leaders. How are you engaging with your supply chain and cross-sector more broadly to drive net zero transition across the economy? Yeah, so we really are focusing in our entire supply chain, so really working with scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions, and really with all of our suppliers. And when you look where our emissions are coming from, 90% are coming from our suppliers, so scope three emissions. And we are engaging and are working closely to them to A, that they commit as well like we do to a science-based goal. And once you have this, they have reduction plan as well. Then we engage with them to move to green electricity or green gas if possible, so green energy, because we can see this is the biggest lever for your manufacturing side. So once you move your electricity green, you have achieved a big step. And then the third is that we want them to share their carbon footprint with us so that we can reduce ours and we can help and also share the knowledge and the, um, the project within our supplier group and really working together as a team and sharing everything. So, Cornelia, what, what is the most important outcome you're hoping for from COP26? Clearly, it's both commitment from a government as well as um, companies like, like ours. We really want to engage that everybody understands the importance of taking action now and having both commitment to achieve the goals in the future because there's not that much time left to achieve the 1.5 degree. And sustainability is really something 
where we also need to have the right educational programs, right? But when you look how companies or how leaders are educated, we are very well educated in financial accounting or different kind of accounting. What is missing is the carbon accounting piece. So really what I was, what we want to have or what I'm looking for is kind of getting the right educational programs for the communities, for the students, and as well as for executive leaders that they understand what makes the impact. We also would love to have transparent rules for the reporting and the accounting because when everybody has the same rule in what is in and what is out of scope and, and the transparency to share the emissions in the, in the similar way, you can compare and you can learn and you can accelerate faster.